Hello and welcome to the introduction to Sport and Exercise Biomechanics Pub Quiz. Hopefully you've read the instructions above and we will begin with question one. Which of the following is not a component of biomechanics? Is it A, biology, B, anatomy, C, mechanics, D, Mathematics. So which of those is not a component of biomechanics? Biology, anatomy, mechanics, mathematics. You can pause the video here and uh, we will move on to your next question now. Kinetics and kinematics refer to the respective studies of what? A. Movement and forces. B, forces and time, C, time and forces, D, forces and movements. So kinetics and kinematics refer to the study of what? Movement and forces, forces and time, time and forces, forces and movement. Pause the video, have a think, and we will move on to your next question there. Which of the following best describes the anatomical position of the rectus femoris muscle? So, useful if you know where the rectus femoris is, of course. Is it A, lateral to the vastus lateralis and medial to the vastus medialis? Could it be B, superior to the vastus lateralis and inferior to the vastus medialis? Or is it C, inferior to the vastus lateralis and superior to the vastus medialis or could it even be d medial to the vastus lateralis and lateral to the vastus medialis i won't be rereading these ones but pause the video have a think and we will move on to your next question now so in which plane of motion does foot ab and abduction occur in is it A, the coronal plane, B, sagittal plane, C, the frontal plane, or D, the transverse plane? So what plane of motion does foot ab and abduction occur in? Coronal, sagittal, frontal, transverse. Have a think about that one and we will move on now. So you're performing a vertical jump and you exert 2,347 newtons of force over a duration of 0.9 seconds. How much momentum do you produce? Is it A, 2,117.8 kilogram meters per second? B, 2,116.1 kilogram meters per second? C, 2,117 kilogram meters per second, or D, 2,112.3 kilogram meters per second. So given that information, how much momentum do you produce? Have a think about this one, get your calculators out, and We'll move on to our next question now. So which of the following would be the most accurate definition for inertia? Is it A, inertia is the force produced by the body's mass due to gravity. B, inertia and mass are synonymous. They basically mean the same thing. Or is it C, Inertia represents an object's resistance to acceleration. Or D, inertia represents an object's resistance to deceleration. So is inertia the force that is produced by an object's mass due to gravity? Basically the same thing as mass an object's resistance to acceleration or an object's resistance to deceleration. Okay, we'll move on to your next question now. 
Which of the following is not one of Newton's laws of motion? Is it A, the law of inertia, B, law of acceleration, C, the law of gravity, or D, the law of reaction? Which one of those is not one of Newton's laws of motion? Inertia, acceleration, gravity, reaction. Have a think, and we'll move on next. Is that? Oh, I got it again for some reason. There we go. Which is the most accurate definition for linear velocity? It should be which of the following is the most accurate definition for linear velocity. So I should point out at this point that they there may be one or two definitions here that could be acceptable for a definition for velocity, but which is the best? Velocity is speed with direction. Velocity is constant unless an external force is present. Velocity is distance divided by time. Velocity is synonymous with momentum. They're basically the same thing. Pause the video, have a think, and we'll move on to the next question now. Which of the following would be the most accurate description for the work that is done when lifting and lowering a barbell? Is it A, positive work and negative work? B, negative work and positive work? C, active work and reactive work? D, reactive work and active work? So which of those are the most accurate ways of describing the work done when lifting and then lowering a barbell? Okay, moving on to the next question. Which of the following is the most accurate definition for mechanical power? Is it A, power causes movement or deformation? Power results in a change in an object's velocity. Power is the product of all of the forces acting on an object. Power is the amount of work that is done per unit of time. So which of those is the most accurate definition for mechanical power? Okay, moving on now. Place each of the following features of the human gait cycle in the order in which they occur. Mid-swing, heel off, initial contact, flat foot, mid-swing, terminal swing. So it might even help to pause the video stand up and just have a little stroll across your room and think about which one of those comes first, second, third fits on. Okay, the next question, you might want to allow yourself an extra minute or two of time. Which of the following equations are inaccurate? Which are not accurate ways of ways of calculating the various measurements on the left hand side of the equation? I'm not going to read them all out, but Pause the video, take a minute or two more, see if you can spot the odd ones out. Okay, let's move on to your next question. So, when describing an unopposed force, which of the following is inaccurate? Inaccurate, I should emphasize there. Is it an unopposed force will cause A, an object to accelerate, B, an object to deform, C, an object to change its speed, D, an object to move. Which of those is the odd one out? Which one shouldn't be there? What is not true? 
is it the object will accelerate, deform, change its speed, move, or E, I've just realized, apologies, change its velocity. Pause the video there, have a think, and we will move on to our next question now. So your Achilles tendon inserts roughly five centimeters away from the malleolus eye of the ankle, that's the axis of rotation for ankle flexion and extension. If one of your calf muscles produces 3000 newtons of force, how much torque is produced during plantar flexion? Is it A? 150 newton meters, B, 120,000 newton meters, C, 6,000 newton meters, D, 300 newton meters. So your calf muscles, a single calf muscle produces 300 newton meters of force. Calf inserts five centimeters from the natural from the natural medial malleoli, and you stand up on your tippy toes. You perform plantar flexion. How much torque is produced? Okay, next question. You hold a barbell. This is during a barbell curl. You're performing a series of barbell curls, and for reasons known best to you, you decide to suddenly stop and hold the barbell in a static position with your elbows flexed to 90 degrees. The barbell produces an external torque of minus 254 newton meters. How much internal torque is required by your elbow flexors to maintain the barbell in this position? Is it A? 254 newton meters, B, 253 newton meters, C, 255 newton meters, or could it be D? This is a trick question. Sneaky Professor TG, it's actually your elbow extensors that are required for this movement. Hmm, maybe, maybe not. Pause the video, have a think. And we will move on to your final question now. So you have a figure skater who is rotating on the spot with one leg on the ground and all their other limbs out to the side, arms out to the side, neck out to the side. You can tell I don't know much about figure skating. What will happen when they bring their limbs towards their body, so close in, draw the leg and the arms back in? Will their angular momentum increase? Will the angular momentum decrease? Will angular velocity decrease? Or will angular velocity increase? Okay, so let's move on to the answers and discuss some of the possible uh, correct and incorrect answers and see how many you got right fundamentally. So the first question asks you to identify a following component of biomechanics, uh, well, or which one was not a following component of biomechanics, biology, anatomy, mechanics, mathematics, and the answer was, drum roll, a biology. Biology is a composite of anatomy and physiology. So human biology would be the study of human anatomy and human physiology. Physiology is a whole other branch of study that, as you well know, we don't deal with in biomechanics. There's some crossover, of course, but we don't tend to uh, use that area too much So, uh, or at all. Uh, biomechanics is a patchwork quilt of a topic comprised of anatomy, mechanics and mathematics. So the odd one out and the correct answer was A, biology. Question two, 
Kinetics and kinematics refer to the study of what? Was it movement and forces, forces and time, time and forces, forces and movement? The answer was D, forces and movement. So the two middle options there, B and C, you could just forget about time, isn't a component here. The only two real options were A and D. However, kinetics is the study of forces without consideration for the movement that occurs due to these forces. And kinematics is the study of movement irrespective of the forces that cause them. Therefore, the correct answer was D, forces and movement. OK, your next question asked you to describe or ask which of the following best described the anatomical location of the rectus femoris muscle. Shan't be reading out all the answers again, uh, or possible answers, but the correct one was, drum roll, D once again. The vast, uh, rectus femoris is medial to the vastus lateralis and lateral to the vastus medialis. So if you look at your right thigh, for example, the most lateral of your quadriceps muscles is the vastus lateralis. So if you put your hand on the side of your thigh, that's on the vastus lateralis. The medialis is the most medial. You can see the clue is in the name there. And the rectus femoris is the only quadriceps muscle that an supports knee extension and hip flexion so it makes sense for it to go down the middle between the other two muscles so therefore it is medial to the vastus lateralis it's towards the midline and lateral away from the midline of the medialis okay so the next question might have caught a couple of you out possibly it asked you to identify the correct plane of motion in which foot ab and adduction occurred in. Was it the coronal, sagittal, frontal, or transverse? And the answer was D once again. I like my Ds, obviously, on here. Uh, the coronal plane is uh, uh, synonymous with the frontal plane. It's, you often see in sort of older biomechanics textbooks the word coronal plane used to describe the frontal plane. It just means the same thing. It's still occasionally used. Um, we don't tend to, though. Uh, we just describe our planes of motion as sagittal, frontal, and transverse. Uh, and whilst it's true that most movements occur in a single plane of motion, so by that I mean flexion extension tends to occur in the sagittal plane, ab and abduction tend to occur in the frontal plane, and rotation tends to occur in the transverse plane, there are still nonetheless exceptions. Uh, and if you want a proof of this, you can place your feet flat on the ground with L, uh, if you bend your knees to about 90 degrees, and whilst keeping your heels fixed to the ground, point your toes towards each other and then away and towards and away and towards and away. That is foot ab and abduction and it's occurring in the transverse plane. So it is an exception to the rule. However, you could argue that all uh, joint motions are rotation really, but there we go. So the next question required a calculator and it asked you to calculate the momentum that was produced during a vertical jump. The answer was, drum roll please, D, 2,112.3 kilogram meters per second. So, how do we arrive at this conclusion? Well, if you multiply 2,347 by 0.9, seconds you will get a value of 2112.3 newton seconds so you would have calculated the impulse there however impulse is equal to a change in momentum so if the impulse is 2112.3 newton meters 
then momentum is going to be the same, but with kilogram meters per second after it. There we are. So the next question asked you to identify the most accurate definition for inertia. And the answer was, inertia represents an object resistance to acceleration, C. So the first two are just blatantly incorrect. Uh, inertia is the force produced by an object's mass due to gravity, that's weight. Uh, weight is a force, of course. Uh, inertia and mass are synonymous. They're not, they don't mean the same thing. They are related, but they're not the same thing. Uh, inertia is an object's resistance to deceleration. And uh, momentum is an object's resistance to deceleration. Inertia represents an object's resistance to acceleration. So if you have an empty water bottle, you can easily accelerate it. If you add water to it, it gets heavier there's more mass and therefore it has a greater inertia and requires more force to accelerate it. So which of the following is not one of Newton's laws of motion? Was it the law of inertia, acceleration, gravity or reaction? The answer was C, the law of gravity. Newton's original laws were stated as three, the law of inertia, the law of acceleration, and the law of reaction. There has since been added the, this is sort of an unofficial law, the law of gravity, uh, because Newton's examples that were given were in a vacuum, uh, in a vacuum of space, which whilst accurate, don't really relate to things that happen down here on Earth, because we have gravity to deal with, so an unofficial fourth law was added, but that was not one of his original laws. So the law of gravity is the odd one out. So the next question then asks you to identify the most accurate definition for linear velocity. I should point out, none of these definitions are um, the best. Um, but the correct one was A. Velocity is the product of speed and direction, which is true. Uh, velocity is just speed, which is scalar with direction, making it vector, which velocity is. Uh, velocity is constant, that's an external force. Uh, our external for oh, yeah, an external force is present, so that would be. Uh, nonetheless true for an object um, but that's not a definition that's a product of velocity that's a that's not defining it it's defining what happens to an object uh, when moving uh, velocity is not distance divided by time it's displacement divided by time and whilst we have equations to explain uh, to calculate rather different variables uh, they are not a definition of that variable and velocity is not synonymous with momentum velocity is a component of the momentum equation so momentum is the product of mass multiplied by a change of velocity but they're not the same thing at all so the answer is a right then uh, the next question asked you to describe the work that is done when lifting and lowering a barbell. Uh, the options were A, positive and negative work, B, negative and positive work, C, active and reactive work, D, reactive and active work. And the answer was da, 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 A, positive work and negative work. So C and D were just uh, blatantly wrong. Active and reactive work just doesn't didn't mean anything reactive and active work yeah, that's something that we would use to describe a force you have an active force and a reactive force uh, but that doesn't apply to work mechanical work so the only real options here were a and b and the answers were a or the answer was a positive and negative work so when we lift a barbell we are performing work on it the muscle has performed work on the barbell 
However, when the barbell is lowered, the barbell performs work on the muscle. And so we would call this lifting phase positive work and the lowering phase negative work. Okay, so our next question asked you to state which of the following is the most accurate definition for mechanical power? And the answer was D. Power is the amount of work done per unit of time. So A, power causes movement or deformation. No, that's how we would describe a force. Uh, B, Power results in a change in an object's velocity. Uh, velocity is a component of the power equation. So we can rule that one out. And C, power is the product of all the forces acting on an object. Uh, no, uh, that would be the sum of all the forces acting on the object. That would be the net force. So the answer, therefore, is D. OK, so our next question then asked you to rearrange the features of the gait cycle that you were given into the correct order in which they occur. And the answer is as follows. So you can give yourself a point for each one that you got in the right position. So option uh, number, where are we, C was actually the first part of the gait cycle this is initial contact this is when the foot touches the ground this is usually a heel strike motion so from heel strike we go to flat foot the foot under the control of the dorsiflexor muscles eccentrically plant our flexors down uh, and this is then followed, which causes the flat foot stage, I should say. You then move to mid stance, which was an option E. Uh, from there, we go to heel off, which was option B, mid swing, and then terminal swing, which was options A and F. So F was actually in the correct position, so you didn't need to move that one around. Okay, the next question Asked you, asked you to identify the inaccurate equations amongst the bunch. So there were a total of, let me just count, six inaccurate equations, and hopefully you've got six. And those were as follows. Impulse equals force divided by time. That's incorrect. It's impulse is force multiplied by time. Acceleration is velocity multiplied by time. No, nope. acceleration is velocity divided by time. Velocity is distance divided by uh, multiplied by time. No, nope. <laughs> it's displacement divided by time. Uh, weight is calculated by taking your mass and multiplying it by 8.91. No, nope. it's 9.81. So that one's incorrect. Uh, Velocity, again, is distance divided by time. Nope, it's displacement. And power is force multiplied by time. It is not. The correct answer is above that. Power is force multiplied by velocity. So, moving on then. The next question asks you to consider an unopposed force and select the option which is inaccurate in describing what will happen when this unopposed force makes contact with an object. Will it cause the object to accelerate, deform, change its speed? Will it cause it to move or change its velocity? So the odd one out, the wrong answer was C. So the, an unopposed force will of course cause an object to accelerate, F equals MA. It may also cause deformation, which is just acceleration of mass on a smaller scale. Uh, D, an object will, of course, then move. It's just a very simplistic way of saying it. And acceleration is a change in velocity. So E's kind of OK. We would accept that one. Uh, 
but it, A is more accurate. Uh, but the most inaccurate, the one that's wrong, is C, an object to change its speed. Uh, because force is a vector, speed is scalar, so that's not... Oh, that is, sorry, the correct answer. Okay, the next one we had to get our calculators out again and explain that if we were to stand up on our tippy toes, so perform plantar flexion at the ankle, with our Achilles tendon five centimeters from the axis of rotation, and one calf muscle produces 3,000 newtons of force, the torque that is then produced when performing this movement. So this might have caught a couple of you, out, possibly, possibly not. The correct answer is D. So if you multiplied 3,000 by 5, or 0 0.05 meters, which is how the equation was, or the options were presented. None of them were presented as Newton centimeters, so you would have had to have converted five centimeters into meters, which is going to be 0 0.05 meters. If you had multiplied 0 0.05 meters by 3000 Newtons and got 150 Newton meters, that's true, but that's only for one leg. You have to consider that there's two. You have two legs when you perform plantar flexion, so you just have to double that, which gives you D, 300 Newton meters of torque. And that's not necessarily an accurate representation of the force in your calf muscles, but it's just a, just to give an example of question, basically. Anyway, the next question. You're holding a barbell at 90 degrees, showing off your arms to everyone, and whilst performing a set of barbell curls, and we know that the torque produced by the barbell is negative 254 newton meters. How much ex internal torque are you having to exert by your elbow flexors to maintain the barbell's position? The answer is... I might have caught one or two of you out, but it, the answer is deceptively easy, or I say it's deceptively difficult, it's actually quite easy, I should say, it's just the opposite. It's If you have an external torque of minus 254 newton meters, then if you were able to exert a torque of the same, but in the opposite direction, so positive 254 newton meters, then the barbell won't move, so this gives us option A. If it, if you were to exert 253 newton meters of torque, the barbell would begin to lower. If you were to exert one newton meter more, you would start to lift the barbell. And D just was a bit of a curveball thrown in there for fun. So the next question and final question asked you to explain what would happen to a figure skater who was rotating on the spot on one leg with the rest of their limbs splayed out to the side and they were then to draw their limbs back towards their body. What's going to happen? Will the angular momentum increase? Will the angular momentum decrease? Will the angular velocity decrease? Will the angular velocity increase? The answer is, drum roll for the final question, is D, the angular velocity increases. So angular momentum is the product of moment of inertia multiplied by angular velocity. And the conservation of angular momentum is similar to the conservation of, angular, of linear momentum. So linear momentum was, will be the same in both scenarios. So the figure skater has their limbs splayed out to the side or drawn in towards the body. The angular momentum stays the same. It's the moment of inertia and angular velocity that will change. And as the moment of inertia reduces, angular velocity increases and vice versa, where the moment of inertia to increase, the angular velocity would decrease, but 
overall angular velocity would stay the same. And to illustrate this point, I have this little short video here just to demonstrate what happens. <laughs> Regardless. So there we are. Um, I hope that was useful to you. I hope you got a few right and enjoyed this MCQ slash pub quiz.